Hi, everybody. It's me, Vivian. I am the creator of Has Been Hotel, if you didn't already know. And I am joined here by some of the amazing cast of season one. Introduce yourselves. Let's do Erica first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica Henningsen. I play Charlie Morningstar. Hey everybody, I'm Amir Talai and I play Alistair. Amazing. And I think we are here to answer some questions. We have some prepared and then we have some that we will take from the chat. So I'm going to start off with the ones that were written and I am very excited to ask these questions. So this one is for everybody. Um, Lucifer and Alistair developed a bit of a rivalry over the role of father figure to Charlie last week. Uh, who do we all think would be the better dad? Of the two? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, I would have to say, I would have to say Lucifer because I know his heart is in the right place. Alistair, I don't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now I'm taking it back because sometimes having your heart in the right place, that's not enough. That's sometimes not enough. you're a fucking failure. So it's tough because Lucifer is absent for the most part. And Alice is always here. there. But now he's here. So I, I have to say, I think Lucifer. I also just like something about the rubber duckies really makes my heart just go out <laughs> to him. I just feel like he wants love so much from his daughter that I feel like when she opens up the door a crack, he will come as he did, busting through. And that's, you know, that's a sign of a good dad. Take that depression. <laughs> Take that depression. It is my favorite rivalry that nobody saw coming. It's like, ooh, a dad, you don't see a dad rivalry that awesome often, do you? <laughs> it was really fun to do that because yeah, I was trying to think. Um, so, so my answer is also Lucifer because I don't know how authentically fatherly Alistair is. <laughs> like, I think when it came to that episode, it was more like Alistair clearly has, you know, a, a natural rivalry to Lucifer because he's such a powerful being and it's like a, you know, it's, it's a threat. Right. And so I feel like it was like, how do I get under this guy's skin? And the most immediate thing is that he really wants a relationship with his daughter. And so Alistair was like, oh, oh, I know exactly what's going to bother him. So I think that's where that was born from. And I think it's really funny that he's just like, yeah, I'm your dad now out of nowhere. <laughs> now, follow up. Would Amir or Jeremy be a better father? Who's to say it's getting personal? <laughs> Well, we'll never find out with one of them. So we know that. <laughs> yeah. TBD on Jeremy. I will say Amir has taken care of all of our travel booking for an upcoming thing we have to go to. And that is iconic dad behavior. I, I'm, I, 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 am, I do like I would be a good dad. We'll never find out be. if I will be, but I would be. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Um, next question is, uh, so fans of the show have been incredibly supportive and enthusiastic, as yes, you guys have, um, about the series uh, from cosplays, writing fan fiction, making fan art. Uh, since both of you are new to the Helliverse, mm -hmm. what's been your favorite experience with the fandom so far? Ooh. I don't even know how you, I, I, I can't, I can't even say like <laughs> one thing, right? Like yeah. someone made me an oh dear mug uh, uh, and, uh, and I love it so much. <laughs> Maybe I'll grab it. Uh, and then, and then I, I think that just my weird ass relationship with fans on Twitter is just hilarious about how <laughs> they troll me and I troll them and it's just constant. <laughs> <laughs> you are the master troller i don't know if we can swear on this but you did you have like an iconic hashtag now amir have you seen this you don't have to be blank to be fab and it's oh that's a hashtag now it's a hashtag it's a hashtag okay um, so what happened was what happened yeah, explain. was the hash so Someone said, "How is because because Alistair is uh, 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 known uh, uh, sort of canonically as being uh, asexual and aromantic, arrow ace. Uh, mm -hmm. That hasn't come up in the show, obviously, but but you know yeah. it's just sort of 
the, uh, the, the conversation is that. Uh, and someone said, how can he be asexual when he does so many cute little gay poses? Uh, and I said, you don't have to fuck to be fab. Uh, <laughs> And, I, and uh, some, some of our ace uh, uh, fans have taken that and ran with it. Someone made a t-shirt and it I is now it. a hashtag. And uh, all I can know. say is like, it, just don't superimpose you don't have to fuck to be fab with my like cringy high school yearbook photo because then it tells a completely different <laughs> story. I'm like, you don't have to fuck to be fab. <laughs> I'm finding it. I'm going to your house. I'm going through the yearbooks. I'm finding that photo. I'm doing a favor to the entire fandom. Um, yeah, don't be surprised if you see like five posts doing that. Yeah, exactly. You said, don't That's the thing about the fans is I go, as I go, please go and create this. And then immediately 10 people create it. Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing that I love is like, we'll put out a little idea into the universe, sort of either on our social channels, any of those things. And the fans take it and run with it. And I do feel like I feel, you know, we recorded these episodes two years ago now. And it kind of is cool because it feels like every time I interact with a fan, be it online or in person, I just go like, oh, you're the reason the story keeps going. Like, Obviously, us getting to do things like this is really fun. But the reason the story keeps going as we wait for more episodes and more seasons is because of them and because of the way that mm -hmm. they like engage with it and engage with fan theories and cosplay and drawings and like claymation stuff. It's just it's just amazing. And that's that's very cool because I think that keeps it just makes me feel like our entire Helliverse lives on even when we're not getting to record story about it in the booth. I just yeah. find myself wondering, like, are fans of other shows this fucking creative and, like, clever and fucking, let's say it, weird at times? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like there's so many, every part of the show, they've remixed it in so many fun and weird ways. Yeah. That's why a lot of people are like, I don't get it. Your show just came out and it's really popular. How is that? And I'm like, because <laughs> these folks have fucking lived with it, it and yeah. Like yeah. been in it for years and yeah. mm -hmm. making their own versions of it. And, and I don't know, it's just cool. It's the best, yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you, thank you all. Yeah, seriously, you guys are, dedicated it obviously was really intimidating on my end um because you know i was writing the show um you know as a fan of these characters as like knowing where their story goes and and where it was meant to go and um but there is a lot of you know like pressure and and everything because the wait was mm -hmm. so long so i'm i'm very proud of what we created and but there was a lot of like I don't know is it does it live up to it like oh my god yeah. um and so i'm very glad that it seems like everyone's enjoying it and that it did and, and i you know i feel like even you know going forward it's going to be just as exciting so 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 thank you guys for waiting and thank you guys for enjoying <laughs> it's awesome all right let me get the next question up yes uh <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there it is oh my god <laughs> Oh, you told me, Amir, about one of my favorite things is that apparently people clapped when there was a screening, when they did a, my name is Charlie, but, and yeah. they like clapped along. Which they I clapped like, along. Yeah. I wasn't and in it. That was um, at the, at the fan screening. Um, yeah. Those, at the fan no, screening. No, we, didn't get to, we didn't get to actually watch it with people, but a lot of my friends were in the, the fan one and <gasps> like, they were telling me there was like cheering. There was like every character that came in, there was cheers. There was crying and there was like screaming there was like clapping along it was like i'm like oh i wish i could have seen that that's amazing the, the, the scene where alistair is is dining on a dead deer uh <laughs> it got uh it's in the is in the first episode or maybe the second i forget the but third um, one yeah. it got a huge reaction like oh and someone behind <laughs> me goes jesus christ <laughs> he's so happy so good <laughs> amazing um all right this question is um have you seen any fan art or cosplays of your character that you've enjoyed um yeah i feel like that's a good one there's some good I mean, cosplays i will say one of my favorite cosplays i've seen so far because i just didn't expect to see it was a lilith was of my mom that was like mm -hmm. 
unreal. And especially because I just wasn't expecting it. It like the first time I saw it, I just thought, oh, that's the most incredible thing ever. That's been my fave. And they also, did you see right before we logged in today, somebody did like a clay, um, what's it called? Like a claymation. Yeah, I saw that on the official account. I was like, that's so cool. No, that's literally the coolest thing I've ever seen. That that was unreal to me. I really want to see like a duo do Charlie sort of in her hotel, you know, buttoned up vibe. And then Charlie, when she gets angry and turns into like wild yeah. and demon, like a side by side duo. Cool. I'm so excited because obviously you haven't seen it yet, but you will soon. Charlie has a really awesome outfit in the finale episode. So I'm very excited for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so excited for to see like that Charlie be cosplayed because I'm like, oh, me too. It's so, it's so me too. I know um, exactly what outfit you're talking about. I was like, yes, I love it. <laughs> <sighs> Amir, have you seen any like cool? Outfits? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, I love the uh, uh, I, the the art is what gets me the most. Like the the cosplay, yeah. I can't even like fathom because it takes yeah. so much like just physical work <laughs> that it almost like breaks my brain at like, how do these people do this? But the, yeah. the art is, is actually what sort of sticks with me. Um, you know, the people who, um, what I find really interesting is, is sort of mashups, you know, like oh, when, when yes. people do like Alistair in like an anime style or as yeah. Alistair in like a Disney style, like all that stuff is really wild to me. And that's what I talk about. That's what I mean when I talk about like the, the fans creativity, um, or even just like the, the shit posts, right? Like when <laughs> someone did Alistair with the shirt that says, I'm not the stepdad, I'm the dad that stepped up like so <laughs> stupid but it makes me so laugh. good though like, it's just it's that stuff is i love that stuff wait where's the there's one oh this is one of my favorites i don't know who did this i don't know if i'm allowed to call people out but this is like somebody took it's me and steph from our uh can you see it we're like in yep. the clothes we wore Oh yes, but it's our character. Yes, and like oh my like God, the mashups so are super cute. cool, and I love this. I think it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, someone, just, someone, what they did was it. they what we, when we really? did our red carpet, they put our characters in our red carpet outfits. Um, yeah, and, it yeah, was so was cool, like, so cute. That's what makes me feel like that. it lives on. I'm just like, oh, it's all the Hellverse is real life. It's all connected. It's all <laughs> happening at the same time. There's no separation. I love it. Amazing. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, what character of the Hasman cast would you most like to spend a weekend with? <laughs> I want to hang out with the Egg Boys. <laughs> That's a good I want to do like I want to do like a full cruise with the Egg Boys. <laughs> Not even a cruise. It could just be like a boat ride. I just want to hang out. Like a, like a boat somewhere. out on the lake. <laughs> yeah, what about yeah, the Egg Boys? Yeah. Why do you I like just, the Egg Boys so much? I just love them. I also feel like they don't get a ton of individual attention. Like, so I really would want to get to know each one as an individual and spend <laughs> time with them and make them feel special. And then and then I also just think it would be really fun to have them around at all times. Don't you feel like if you let if you help them like let loose a little bit, some chaos would ensue? That's what I want. I, I feel like them. they'd be a lot, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like having a bunch of children running around that you're responsible yeah, for. Yeah, like a lot of really like constantly making line. noise. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. them. I want to get to know each of them. It would be thrilling for me. What about you? <laughs> I'd probably go Husk. I just think like a chill weekend oh. with Husk. Uh, you know, have some chill conversations, but also just not say anything for a while. You know what I mean? Just like sit and read and... Yeah. uh <laughs> Us, like to me, you, you know those people i mean i'm one of these people I, this is said to me often where they're like hey you know we don't have to talk that's what yeah. i feel like husk would like, say <laughs> like we don't have to you, talk. it's okay to not talk that's like what i feel mm -hmm. like husk husk and i on a weekend together would just be that happening over and over again yeah <laughs> <laughs> what about you babe oh, who do you want to spend a weekend with Oh man, man, I feel like all the characters have such like intense personalities that it would be like, oh my God, I feel like the most fun, interesting 
would be like Pentius because he's weird and he's awkward. And I think I'd just be asking questions the whole time. And like, it would be funny. Like, I think it'd just Why? be funny to laugh at. <laughs> Why are you? I feel you like you guys, I feel like, I feel like, guys, I feel like Pentius and the Egg Boys are good for like, one night at a bar yeah like that is true a weekend is a lot or maybe one like a dinner actually <laughs> yeah. no, i would love life. to go to dinner with pentius and charlie that would be a riot and then i could go the fuck home i would be yeah. so fun for a whole weekend i would plan your entire weekend activity for you you wouldn't have to do anything you 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 would love it you would love it <laughs> That is a good point, though. I'd be so, like the first day would be really fun, and then the second day would be like, okay, when I get to leave. <laughs> Amazing. Um, let me see. Oh, this one's a tricky one, but I'll ask it because it is here. Without confirming or denying, what are some of the most interesting fan theories um, you've seen so far from the show's storyline or finale? Um, I can start this one. I've actually well, seen... start. I'm afraid to put yeah. my foot in my mouth with some info. Totally. I mean, I can answer this one if you guys want. I, I think for yeah. me, the most I can say safely is just a lot of people have already gotten things right. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, damn it. Like, I try to avoid like liking or leaning into anything that's too like spot on. Um, but I have seen some, um, not just... Uh, with the finale, because there's some people that are like, wouldn't it be cool if like this exact thing happened? And I'm like, yeah, it would be cool, actually, maybe. It would be cool, um, and it will happen. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm excited to see, like for those people to see that. Um, but another safe one to answer, because it was one that was revealed recently, was a lot of people had the fan theory about Baggy being an exorcist. And yeah. um, I there was a lot of like misdirect though, because like when I first made the character and just, you know, through the development and the years of making these projects, I kind of changed some of the stories around a lot. And people are like, which one's true? Which one? Like, did she die in the 80s? Did she do this or that? Like, nobody really knew what the real thing was. So when we started actually dropping the hints about like what it actually is in the story some people like really clued in on them and then some people were like no that can't work because of this information and that so in a way it's kind of nice to have so much development exist because it muddies everything that could be everything happening else. so there's so much misinformation going on that i'm like i'm really like you guys who theorize are are superstars because like there's so much misinformation and just old information and things about the show and the characters you could really have to just look at what's there in the show um yeah. so you guys are doing a, a great job because some of you guys are nailing things so <laughs> is there anyone that people have gotten incredibly wrong or that you're like oh that yeah it's never happened what's the one that you yeah. that you just kind of saw and laughed at i'm curious because there's uh there's one yeah. There's one, um, I'll, I'll just, just to avoid anything major from has been, um, there's one from my other series, Hell of a Boss, which okay. is, um, there was a, one of the Seven Deadly Sin characters uh, was going to be in the show and everyone thought there's another character in the show named Wally Wackford and he's exactly what you'd think with that name. Um, and he's kind of a, a minor silly character and a lot of people had the theory that he was Mammon secretly. And then we introduced Mammon recently and it's like completely different. And we made a point to put them both in the scene together um, ah, because we're like, be like You're wrong. <laughs> it's not true. I'm sorry, guys. It was a fun yeah. theory, but it's not true. <laughs> so that was a fun one to like kind of see debunked in real time. I love that. <laughs> All right. Let me see. I, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to get into like plot theories what cracks me up is the theories about production right mm -hmm. like when people are like oh well the reason it's delayed is this and this i know and it's like really? my friend it's, my it's, someone's like someone's like they've already made 16 episodes but amazon is just holding on to the other eight and it's like really because where are my it's like 16 conspiracy shows? theories <laughs> yeah my favorite I was not my there favorite for those one. other eight my favorite ones are, yeah, my friend's brother works for A24 and like he knows the whole story. And he he said that Charlie dies in episode four. And like he and I'm like, and they, those were happening. And I remember reading them being like, is anyone buying? <laughs> it's 
so funny. So yeah, those are the best. Those I love those. I love those. Those are the best. <laughs> My brother, he knows. Like he works at A24. He knows. <laughs> he knows. I don't even know. I don't know what's happening until like four days before we record it. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's what happens? Like, people people are know. asking me when does when does the show drop on Friday, and I'm like, I have no. I don't clue. actually. <laughs> Anybody's guess. Anybody's guess. I always say it's the magic of time zones, but like it makes it extra fun because people are like waiting by the door, which like is amazing. Like, thank you guys so much for being so, so excited to just like just like oh my gosh it's coming out like so soon so i can't wait for you guys to see it i think that's tomorrow sometime and I'm so, i can't wait it's it's mm, i love these these last two amazing um so erica this is a question for you so performing for the stage and voice acting are clearly very different in terms of how you build a character and convey emotion what was the biggest challenge for you in only being able to use your voice to create the character mm. A very good question. Um, to me, it's actually, it, there's actually like a freedom in it of just using your voice because you get to, I make noises in Hasbun Hotel that I could not make eight times a week, like truly insane <laughs> noises and insane choices that I'm like, that would not work on stage. It would not work repetitively, but it's fun because I just think like, let me throw in as many choices as possible. And then you and our incredible team and our animators get to choose the one that to them, like speaks to them the most visually that they can animate the best. Um, so that's been, that's been the main, that's been the main difference. And I, I really, I, I have to say it. Like, I really think voiceover acting is just getting to be your most spontaneous weird self. And I feel like stage doesn't always allow for that because you have, you know, other cast members on stage with you, safety, people <laughs> in the audience in front of you. Like you can't make weird choices because the show gets set. And in this, it's kind of like, hey, we only have you for three hours. So can you give us every possible option and go off the walls and then we'll choose the best one. And that doesn't happen all the time in a rehearsal theater process. Most of the time it doesn't. It's like, do this. <laughs> Absolutely, that makes sense. That's, a, that's yeah. really awesome. Yeah, so fun. I love it. And Richard Horvitz That's... is the best. This is just my, <laughs> my daily shout out to Richard Horvitz, our voice coach. I love him. Our voice Fantastic. director. Coach is the wrong word. Yeah. Yeah, voice, he's so he's so great. I love Richard. Love to you, Richard. I think you're um, arriving for a con, which I will be at as well very soon. Um, Amir, so on, <laughs> on Twitter, you said that Alistair definitely has a tail. What kind of tail do you think he has? <laughs> <laughs> and can you draw it? And, do and you draw it, a, yeah. Can you draw it? And can you show us how it would make you walk? Oh, this is kind of fun, though. There's different ideas. So most people draw them with a little, you know, like a little deer tail. But someone said for this question is, is it a short deer tail? Or is it long like an electric cord for a radio or something completely different? Mm. What would it be? What would it be if you could choose if Alistair had a tail or not? <laughs> <laughs> Look. I don't know if he has a tail. I said he definitely has a tail. And then I waited until it got 50 retweets. And then I said, or maybe he, or maybe he doesn't have a tail. You are just stirring shit up, Amir. You are, That's like, such an Alistair thing to do. That is so Alistair to just be like, let's see what this is going to do. And just be like, and just wait and see. <laughs> I literally just sat and I saw I saw the likes coming. I saw the replies. I saw people freaking the fuck out like, yes, he's confirmed it. And I was like, just wait, just wait. And as soon as it hit 50 retweets, I was like, nope or nope. You love the power. Maybe not, actually. You love the power. It's like your mission control board. You love it. I honestly don't know. And uh, Vivian has not told me. If he has a tail, and, uh, I, I can I can say I can look I can definitively say this: in the first season, he does not use any tail that he may have to influence the plot in any way. Does so any that tail is not relevant. The plot? Does any individual tail influence the plot in season one? I don't know. You could maybe uh, if maybe you had like a, sort of, if you had like a maybe pronged. Penches. If you had like a pronged tail, you could maybe bitch slap someone with it. 
I feel like Pentius has used his tail at one point in the show. So I'm going to say maybe him. <laughs> That's yeah. like it. I yeah, I wouldn't yeah. call it necessarily a story point, but you. you no, know. I'm probably not a story point. <laughs> but if Pentius's it were, if it were me, very I feel like guys. if it were, if I were an animator, which thank God I'm not, because some of you have seen my artistic work on the red carpet. Um, I would make Alistair's tail like sort of like a devil tail, right? Mm. Like a like a sort of quintessential sort of yeah. long. Yeah, with the uh, with the little at the end. Yeah, yeah. But again, I'm not I'm not one for artistic details, so yeah. <laughs> that is cool. That'd be a swooshy, cool tail. swooshy deer tail. I think that'd be so cute. <laughs> That's what everyone wants. They're like, That's what everyone wants. That's <laughs> yeah, the little tiny like, like cute deer tails. What everyone <laughs> wants. Whether or not yeah. it happens, I don't know. That secret's with me. It'll be answered eventually. You guys will see. Why would we ever <laughs> see Alistair's tail? Like what? I know that. Well, that's the real question for me. Is I'm like, when he'd have to be like without the coat, and that's very rare. I feel. Yeah, in general. I imagine him so sleeping like, fully dressed. Hmm. Like he's fully. I don't know if he sleeps at all. all. He just he just stands in the corner of the room. Yeah, and just does someone stares, does someone like walk in on him in the shower or something. And, and he's like, still oh. in the he's still in the outfit. <laughs> no, he's still in his full coat. Like they just walk in, they're like, <laughs> he also okay. might not. That I feel like so there's a lot of jokes about him just not showering and just not ever like so he might be like the smelliest character for all we know. I have no idea. I don't think but, about yeah, it. Yeah, but we are like, in his era. Like he doesn't need to, it's not a thing. <laughs> Guys, we never see anyone showering or pooping. That doesn't mean they don't do either. Okay, yeah, but you see Charlie and Baggy in their jam jams, and I know that you know they take they take a shower before they put in their jam jams. Why? Why do you know that? I just know. <laughs> I just. Know. When you were recording the jam jam scene, you were like, "Hold on, hold on, Vivian. What is there a shower?" Is there a shower? Did she just shower? Uh, I need. I, I, Richard, it's very important, I Laura. You, am I freshly showered or not freshly showered? Hold wow. on, let me. Do, it'll um, change the original question. What was the question? The tail. <laughs> yeah, we went very far around it, but that was great. Um, all right, Erica, another question for you. Um, Charlie is by far the most positive and optimistic character in the show. Um, or just about anywhere else for that matter. How do you think she will manage to keep that positive outlook moving forward? Will she? Stay <laughs> tuned. Um, no, literally stay tuned because I don't know if she will, but I think that's why she has her, her friends at, at, the, at the hotel. I think, I think everything she does is for for the Hasbun Hotel inhabitants and for Baggy and to make her parents proud, which like we can all identify with at some point in our life. Um, but I also think that like, I kind of love her relationship with Angel Dust because I feel like he really puts her in her place sometimes where he's like, you're acting with your best intentions, but you're actually messing everything up and she needs that. So if anything, I feel like maybe she'll hold on to her positivity because she has actual realists around her who will say like, you know, we see what you're trying to do. It's okay to fail. It's okay to admit you don't know what's going on. And I feel like that's how she will hold on to it because she has people to sort of catch her in those moments. Um, but you'll have to wait and see because I think some some stuff is coming. Something's about to be handed to Charlie. I don't know if she's going to be able to have the same worldview with where we're headed. Is mm -hmm. that a spoiler? It's not really a spoiler. No, it's a hint. It's a That's hint. Awesome. Yeah, but we see it coming. Like she's like running herself in circles, trying to accomplish what she wants, and she's kind of hurting. Somebody tweeted at me. They're like, "She's really positive. She kind of fucks everything up." And I was like, "Yes, <laughs> correct." Yeah, she's trying, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely a character that like has a very very simplistic view on what redemption is and yeah, she wants and to achieve it so her intentions are really really yeah. there but part of the show and part of the question is that redemption is a complicated thing and it's something that you kind of have to discover and learn so you know that's kind of part of it is charlie's kind of starting with the most simplistic view of it but yeah. you know that's part of the growth of her 
Um, it's the, amazing. It's the gray. It's the gray area that I love. That I love that the show talks about. Is that like she might see things as black and white, but everybody else is aware that no, the world and the hellverse, it's it's all gray. It's all gray. Absolutely. Yes. Amir, and in episode five, we got a glimpse into Alistair's backstory. What do you think Alistair's past tells us about what he is now and his possible interest in the hotel based on the backstory? Ooh. Based on the backstory of Mimsy, who we have to assume is a reliable narrator. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that bitch. Um, uh, <laughs> I. I uh, uh, I, I can't answer this. Viv, I can't answer this. I don't, that's like, fair. I know, that's fair. I know you honestly, know a little bit more what, about it. So it's like, hmm, maybe, yeah. Fair. Who wrote that question? Because that person knew what they were asking. They were like, what if I disguise it as like a really intellectual question in order to get a spoiler? <laughs> it's like, who? All right. Let me yeah, see I mean, other look, one we're gonna, we're, uh, obviously we're going to find more out about Alistair in future episodes. And so I, yeah. I literally, I, I can't You're find like, a way hmm. to answer that question without giving it away. Exactly. No, that's really fair. This, all right, this next one for you that I think is easier. Do you think there's anything or anyone that scares or intimidates Alistair? And that could be a yes or no as well. I think there, I think, I think there has to be, I don't think it's an interesting character if there isn't. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's obviously extremely powerful, extremely confident. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll see it in these last two or if we'll see it in, in, in season two or season eight, but, uh, you know, like there, th there is no, Vivian wouldn't create a character who is just like, I have it all together, right? No one has it all together. And so, um, I, I think, uh, at a certain point, we're going to find out what he's scared of, um, what is what is underneath uh, his power, what his what his needs and desires fully are. Because we have a good sense of it in these first six, but I don't think uh, we, we have even scratched the surface. Absolutely, yeah, I'm really excited for people to see a little bit more of Alistair's like varying emotions we definitely see it in episode five like we see him more angry and more kind of threatened by something but he's not really intimidated by lucifer and so i am looking forward to that being something that that you guys maybe see maybe in the future um uh erica uh let me find this oh yes uh so this one says spoiler alert um oh. up to this point in the season baggy has always been there for uh, Charlie. Um, she's someone Charlie can rely on no matter what. But how do you think that the revolution or revelation rather of what she that she is an exorcist, sex exorcist, can't even say my own shit, uh, an exorcist angel. Um, how do you think that's going to affect their relationship moving forward? Obviously, we're going to see, but we're going to see just based on how you feel. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing, and I, and, and I, we've talked about this with why I love their relationship so much is that it's built in like pure honesty and support of one another. And I feel like the thing that matters the most to Charlie is not Baggy's past, past life, past, past life, but her lying, like her keeping a secret. And again, who knows what would have happened? Like, I, I do think they love one another very dearly. And I think, like you said, Charlie, Charlie is trying, Charlie believes that things are black and white, but I think she's learning to see the gray in the world. So I, I feel like obviously we're going to see it in the next two episodes, but for me, I, like, especially even rewatching this most recent episode where we find out the thing that hit me watching was it's the hurt of, of just not being told something that I think she would have had the mm -hmm. capacity to if not embrace, understand, and and hold with Vaggy, so that Vaggy wasn't having to keep that like angst and secret all to herself. Um, yeah, that to me is the main thing. It, and that's and that's like such a personal, that's such a real life example of when relationships go through like a little tear in the fabric. It's not always because somebody did something that was deceptive. It's that they felt like they had to keep it from their partner. And I've like had that where I'm like, oh, you could have just told me. I would have, we would have figured it out. Um, and I do think Baggy and Charlie are that type of relationship. So I think that's the hardest thing for Charlie to hear in this moment. 
um, and yeah. we'll see what <laughs> happens very soon. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> anyway. exactly. um, all right. So now we've got some fan questions that were in the chat that um, uh, Joseph gave to me. Is the chat um, happening now? Are people? It are is. People- yeah, we can't see it. By the way, I'm so sorry. Aww. We can't see it the way our setups are. Or at least I can't. I can't speak for everybody, but um, but we are, and these are questions from the chat. So, all right, let's go to them. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, this one's for me. So, Viv, why does Alistair keep Nifty around? Describe their bond. I'm very excited because I think in the next uh, couple episodes, we see a little bit of a peek into Alistair's relationship with Nifty. And as most people have noticed, Nifty is one of the few characters that Alistair just lets kind of just climb all over him and just kind of just do things. And, and he doesn't really, like, he, he's very... Um, I, I view it as he's very fond of her. That's something that's kind of lasted yeah. through like every iteration of the characters. Um, and I think it's just because like, I don't know if it's just how strange she is or the fact that he kind of knows a little bit of her history or anything like that. And they just can connect on this, like almost like everything is beneath them in a way, kind of like she doesn't care about anything and he doesn't care about anything. And they, they he kind of, I don't know. I, I just see them as a really fun um, connect, but I do think, as far as Alistair's relationship with Nifty, I do think he's very fond of her. I think he thinks she's really fun and endearing in his own way. Um, so, uh, that's I mean, I just think Nifty's Nifty's a murderous agent of chaos. <laughs> and yeah. what's not to love just there, small. right? <laughs> a swap. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, by the way, in case you're curious, ladies, about what the chat looks like, I pulled it up. Oh my gosh, it's like moving. <laughs> What are it's they moving. Yay. It's really moving. It's incredible. And there's uh, 28,000 28, watching. Oh, my God. Well, That's hello, amazing. everybody. <laughs> I feel like no we're like, we're just, like, shooting the shit. I'm like, do I feel like we need to do more? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, A lot God, of these are. I that earlier. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just started sweating profusely through my blazer. <laughs> I like this one. This is a good question for everyone. Um, how tall do you think Lucifer is? <laughs> I think the definition of a short king is four eight. That's short. Wait, 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 wait. No, really no, 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 no. short. Not four eight. Not four eight. Five eight. Five eight. Oh, five eight. I was like four eight. Whoa! Like, wait, 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 wait. I'm like, wait, wait, I need to rewind before you're like, that's short. Wait, wait, wait. I'm 5'4". Mm-hmm. He's 5'2". And I think Charlie's like almost a foot taller than him. Yeah, Charlie's I'm like, I'm sure you are. I'm 5'4". He's 5'2". He's 5'2". <laughs> He's 5'2". Like, like in, in, I, I do think the hat adds like a level. Like it does. It adds, it adds like, like a whole head. Five, six ish. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, but I did that. <laughs> wow. My math was so bad. Just how I was like, wait, wait, how tall am I? Subtract two. Is the hat <laughs> a conscious choice of his yes. to make up for his shortness? Absolutely. Okay. I would imagine so. It's like the crown, well, you know, it's like the equivalent of the crown. Yeah. Absolutely. Pharrell that wears is... that enormous hat. And I feel like Pharrell just wears it because it's fashion. I don't think he's particularly concerned about being short. I don't think mm. Lou's first concerned with fashion. I think he is concerned with his shortness. But I <laughs> yeah, love that for sure. <laughs> I also, love that about him so much. He's so I, I, I do think... too. I really wanted to make him tiny. I thought, especially since um if you if you've seen my other show, you know that the other sins are very, very big. So I was yeah. like, I love the idea that the king of all of them is the tiniest one and he's very in, like not intimidating. It's just the cutest idea for me. Um, real fast, How tall it seems I. Oh, Charlie? She is yeah. um she's like six and a half feet. She's big. She's really tall. So she's a six tall six and a half. Okay. I knew I was six yeah, above or something six like that. six and a half is tall, tall. Yeah. Ooh, a little a little like fuck. six plus. A little yeah. bit. And then baggy. That's so like, the answer is like level. Huh? That's WNBA yeah. level. Six four. Yeah, no, yes. she's very tall. A lot of my characters are really big. Like Angel's like massive actually because he's you know taller than everybody he's like eight feet or something like they're yeah. they're very big valentino's like 10 feet like it's like they're they're yeah. very inhuman creatures <laughs> yeah. how tall is alistair alistair's like 
what six he's like around charlie's height maybe I a think little we're taller the same so height. yeah he's I think like that's seven. why lucifer is yeah. so intimidated by you exactly <laughs> Um, real fast. It sounds like the chat, a lot of people in the chat are asking where they can actually watch the show. The show is on Amazon prime and you can watch it right now. And the next, the final two episodes drop tomorrow. So yes. Also yeah. people keep asking the song from our trailer is in one of those episodes. Yes. And it's the song from the trailer is in the next drop. So you will see it. And oh, I'm very okay. excited for that. Um, amazing. Um, let's see. Ooh. Oh, oh, this is a fun one. Who's your favorite uh, of the three V's so far? Vox. Which which is your favorite V? <laughs> Vox. Oh, you said but, Vox. <laughs> but again, I don't know if that's because I just have such an affinity for, for Christian Worrell's voice in that role. Like, I just enjoy it a lot. Um, I, I, also, like... Me personally, I have such problems with Valentino. Like, I just like, I don't think I'll ever love Valentino in any capacity. Like, I, I understand the character, but I just, I, I mean, don't like him. He makes me mad. He hurts my friends. Um, so Vox, I like Vox. Fair. No comment. Why? <laughs> I know yours is definitely not Vox. I know. Are you so mad that I said that? That's Erica answering. Not Charlie. There's judgment happening. <laughs> Amir's like, Alistair and I are one and the same. We have, we have fused. <laughs> <laughs> we have That's fused. I know it is crazy oh, that I just said box though. I oh, this is that. a fun, this is a fun follow-up to that then though for Amir. Do you think there's more to the Alistair and Vox beef slash rivalry? What do you mean? <laughs> um, I don't know. That was the question. <laughs> Say, do you think there's more to it other than just that they hate each other? They hate each other. Vox is a little bitch who's jealous. <laughs> you know, Alistair enjoys Vox, you know, the way he enjoys his area rug, you know? It's something, it's something yeah. that is there and he walks all over. It's nice, it's, you know, happy to have it there. It's, it's pretty simple. It adds a nice dynamic to life, but other than that. Sure. Yeah, but it would be a little more boring without, but, but also I love that. inconsequential. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Um, uh, this is a good one for everybody. Would you describe Alistair as chaotically good or chaotically neutral or lawfully evil? Um, I'm not as familiar with the classifications, but I would say chaotically neutral. That's my like uninformed off the bat opinion. What was the third one? Yeah, what was it? Lawfully yeah. evil. Lawfully, <laughs> evil. Lawfully, lawfully evil. evil. Boy, uh, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to answer because I'm not smart enough to hide what I know. Mm. I'm sorry, okay. guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. This is actually- They know weird. more because they've wait. read through more that you guys will see. It's really hard to That's answer right. without giving to... things away. Yeah. It's like a challenge. Season two, um... 2027. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Don't say that. That's so far. That's so far. <laughs> It what um on. oh this is a this is this one might be an easy one because it's more production y. What was the hardest scene to uh record in season one or song? I know it was a while ago, so uh... <laughs> sure it was, it was two and a half years. You know what was really hard was was um it was such a weird time yeah. in 2021 and uh, and it, it's always so hard to know, like, it's just hard to know if you're nailing it. Yeah. And, and in the, you know, in the booth, you're there by yourself. There's it, it, you know, I've done shows before where there's four or five of us in the booth and you get a real sense of, um, of chemistry and of pace. And when you're doing it by yourself and it's a musical, no less, and you're doing duets, by yourself 
it's hard to know that you're nailing it. Even when Vivian and Richard are like, you nailed it, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's hard to feel it inside. And so you end up leaving the session going, I, I hope, I hope that that was right. You know, yeah. that that's what was hardest for me. I think that I, I truly think the hardest thing was the first two episodes is because I just felt this pressure, like knowing that this was going to be one of the first things people have waited a really long time to see. I just felt this immense pressure. And I still, you know, you're still finding your, your, your voice and your version of it for the first session or so. And I really remember feeling exactly that. And we were the first two sessions being like, what if they don't like it? What if they don't like what I'm doing? What if I lose them be early on and they, they never care about this character because of some choices I've made. So that, that to me was the scariest, hardest, like there, there've obviously been songs that have been hard, but you know, you figure that out. You just learn how to, you know, you figure out how to sing certain things in X, Y, Z, and you have enough takes to, to get it. So it's the emotional fear, I think, was the hardest to work through. Because um, we all just want you to love it a lot. <laughs> and, it can be and, you know, like, I, I was, I had never met Vivian and Richard before, yeah. right? And so uh, you just have to, as an actor, just be like, I'm going to trust them. Yeah, yes. And then just do, which is, it's not always easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's different for like Brandon and Vivian, right? Because they are like, they have a, you know, 100 year short hand. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it still gets um, pretty, it's funny, Brandon will, will help write episodes, but you know, he's, he's working a mile a minute. So we'll come in to record and he'll be like, oh, I remember this one. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's the... It's really fun because like when you guys make choices in the booth, like it's it's amazing. And um, for me, like I compile it together and I build the, mm -hmm. the radio play. And it's always like it's so cool to hear it all together, because especially thanks to Richard acting with you guys, um, it sounds like you guys are all together. So it sounds very yeah. seamless. Um, Can I ask you a question Viv, that I've always wanted to know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> So like we record, we'll do like an ABC. So we'll do three in a row, different takes, sometimes five in a row, depends. And then you'll go, you'll go, and it's fast. And you'll go, I want take 37A, take 37C, D, alt. How do you know? Are you, do you like close your eyes and just go off of like a feeling? Like, what do you, are you watching us? What do you do? So I had I that usually... same fucking question. I had that same question. I was literally going to ask that. Yeah, oh, and, it's, and it's immediate. You choose immediately because there's no time. You're like, mm -hmm. I want B and C. You can cut D onto the next line. Like, it's wild how fast you do it. Yeah, well, me and Richard have definitely got it down to a science. Um, for me, yeah. I've found that, yeah, like, what I'll do is I'll, you know, I write the take number and I write ABC out. And then I just, uh -huh. I I really do just focus. Like, I sometimes I'll, I'll watch you guys perform, but usually I look off to the side because I'm listening to, like, the read. And I'm like... Yeah. And it's it's always so great because I can already picture it. Like I, I'm already like, oh, that's how we'll probably draw it if we use that one or that's how, you know. And like, you know, it sounds so animated when you're just hearing the, the audio. And it's like that too yeah. when I, like I'll circle the ones I love, but then I'll end up with, you know, if I circle three, I'll still end up with three different versions, same line. So then I line them up on the timeline and I listen back through them and I'm like, okay, that's the one I, I ultimately want. Or I'll play it next to, you know, let's say it's a conversation between Charlie and Alistair and we've recorded you both. Like I'll play it next to the other read and I'll go, oh, that one pairs better with the read, with you know, and line. stuff like that. So it's like an extra um, curated process, but I love it. And I love like hey, I, getting to it to a science is just, I will circle as I go. So like I'll be listening and like when I really love a take, whether, even if it's just like the top of the line and I, and yeah. I'm like, Oh, that's fantastic. I circle it. And then, um, wow. you know, we go from there. So it's, it's really fun. It's a very fun process. And yeah, I've gotten it down to a science where I'm just, I circle. So I know exactly which one I liked from each line read. But that's also why every so often they will be like, they slotted a, or they didn't slot a line and I thought they did. So it'll be like, oh no, actually that was like D E F of like line or, or take 20 and I'll be yeah. have written 21. And I was like, 
shit. Okay. So I guess that was D instead of A, you know, of 21. So, you know, super like production-y answer, but like, it's also, it's fun. So for any of you guys like wanting to know how the sausage is, is made, like, you know, it's, that's, that's how recording goes. You know, they, they do these like more than one take. And then I write, you know, which one I liked and I circle it and then we end up saying which back and then that's the so cool. amazing editor is able to snip out the right one. And you know, the rest is, is history. So it's great. Um, yeah. And then me Wait, and Richard sorry. are so I'm comfortable. So sorry. Can, I ask, can I ask another process question? So totally. when you say I want, uh, you know, this is my first choice on everything, then does the editor put together a version with your first choices of everything? Yeah. So they, they basically, yeah, like I'll do which one I circled and then everything else is alt. So they'll give me Got like it. the one that was my circle, but then you'd be surprised how many alts make it in just because I'm like, well, there's something really interesting on those ones. And then, yeah, when uh -huh. you play it in, it's like the alts, like, and sometimes it's just, you just did the line in a bigger way or a different way. Yeah. And it just, it's literally just like, which one ultimately do I want to animate or do we want to animate to? Um, because both are phenomenal, but they're just, there's so, like something slightly different about one versus the other, you know? So it's, it's it gets a, very specific. If it's a long line, lol, we've turned this into our Q and A. Okay. Last one. If it's a long <laughs> line, will you, um, split it? Will you ever be like, I liked the first half of that, but the second Sometimes, half Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. That happens a lot, especially during the big monologue -y ones. Like sometimes yeah. those will be totally intact because it was just nailed. But sometimes like there's like a really amazing like choice in the beginning. Um, but then like on another take, it's like the ending had this like different kind of tone or emotion and just, you know, and then that combination kind of creates like a completely new thing. So it's so fun to like find those for, that's usually for, yeah, like the bigger lines. Um, but yeah, I, I love, I love it. It's so, it's, it's one of my favorite stages actually is getting to record and hear the lines for the first time, then choose which ones are going to end up in the radio play. Because once we have them, that's what we're listening to for two years <laughs> of production. So, you know, it's, it's really fun to, to create that. So that's a good question. These are fun questions for you guys to be learning about. Um, and then let me try and find like a fun last question because I think we're almost at time. Um, let's see. I love all the people who are like, oh, this is, a fun is Angel going to die? Is Alistair going <laughs> to die? Yeah. Everyone yeah. thinks someone's going to die. Who's going to die? Who's going to die? <laughs> um, technically, well, I, I can just cause a lot of chaos right now. Uh, someone dies. But I, I'm not saying who. Wow! <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to ruin it. But no, no, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be obvious. It's big. I mean, people have to. I'm be. causing chaos. Somebody's got to die. But I don't. I don't think if you guys are worried, it's Angel. I, I think you can sleep. You can sleep at night tonight. Don't worry. Um, this is a fun last head. question. Um, if you had to record a cover of a song from the series that you don't actually already sing, which one would you choose? Oh, Amir, you just had a really cool tweet about, well, I I want like, I want us to do like an acoustic close harmony of poison. Yes. Mm. Desperately. Like, just a guitar really like, almost like coffee shop vibes, <laughs> which is kind That's of like- literally the exact, yes. I love it. And I also feel like that is what Charlie would do because she's like maybe a little tone deaf and it's like, I don't really get this. So like, <laughs> let's like slow it way down. Um, I would love that. We honestly, Amir, we should figure out how to do that on one of our like travel weekends together. Cause that, can you play the guitar? Blake can play the guitar. Oh, I think great. Blake can. I think he can. That'd be great if Blake played the guitar, but we didn't let him sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. That'd be pretty you great. Play. You play. You. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that though. What do you? What do you want to do here? I love that. Though. That's my answer. No poison. Oh, great. Acoustic guitar. Acoustic. I thought it would be solo, but to do a duet with you, my goodness, that's. I mean, that's. <gasps> Yeah, you can sing it. I'll just come in with like the high third above you every now and then, like no, really no, no. background vocals to your moment. I'm no, no, no. It. it would be a sort of like more than words type of thing. We'd figure out how to like go back and forth. So fucking words. moody. Oh my God, so what moody. a millennial reference. 
right? <laughs> black and, we'll shoot the video in black and white, yeah. one take, <laughs> sitting on stools. <laughs> it's giving like a little like um youth youth group vibes like like <laughs> oh my god the most inappropriate little, like, way to sing that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying to like totally change it but like that kind of be the joke of it to be like they don't get they missed it they they missed the boat on this one <laughs> yeah have like, like when the I guitar did, like when and we just kind of giving you my high school <laughs> <laughs> I love amazing. It. Well, that's, oh, that's coming. I mean, I think we've just committed to this. So yeah, we'll that you're gonna, you guys are gonna have to see point. that eventually. Someone, yeah. Look, Sam is busy. Someone, someone, come up with an arrangement for Erica. And we will me do it. And we will we'll sing it. Yeah, Sam, Sam and Andrew are very busy on season two, so they have no time. Which is it. not in production. Season two, we don't know. <laughs> we, don't have we were told not to stay no, if it's in production, happening. guys. All, all the photos you see are lies. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh man. Well, this was great. This was so fun. Thank you guys so much for, for coming to this. Um, don't forget the show is available right now on Amazon prime. You can go watch all the episodes and the final two are dropping tomorrow. And yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for everyone to see the end of the show. It's been an incredible journey and just, I don't know. I'm sure we'll do more of these. I'm so excited to, to talk with the cast more. And then I think you guys are doing a couple cons up coming up so you know you can start to see them at cons and like we're we're gonna have some big stuff coming and we're all doing scad atlanta this friday yeah we're doing yeah. um scad tv fest soon so very excited for that well awesome thank you guys so much um and thank you amazon and a24 and everyone setting this thank up thank you thank you for leading it too you the best yeah, bye ladies it was good to good to hang with bye. you bye see yes. you all very soon